distinguished speakers, and the young ladies and gentlemen. My sister and I had a, were given a good education by our parents and encouraged to do something with it and be totally independent. We did that. She's a journalist and I've just retired after 36 years in the police. Those 36 years taught me many things, but the most important one was that all of us in the department, whatever level we are at, we need to constantly interact with the community that we serve so that we can do a better delivery of service. To ensure the safety and security of every individual and their property, the most important thing is prevention of crime or mishap. To do this, the police cannot do it totally on their own. So to do this, we need the cooperation of the same community. And in turn, that community, the people we serve, have to have confidence in us. Very often, we see that there is a lot of bashing that happens. But in more than 80% of the areas, I think the confidence is there. However, I have to go back or part of my story. And so I'm totally different to all the speakers who have spoken before and maybe who come after also. Three decades back, I was posted as ASP in Salem in uh, Tiruputur subdivision of the erstwhile North Arcot district. The Javadi Hills, which consists of 36 mother villages, all inhabited by tribals, fell into my jurisdiction. And the Javadi Hills actually spanned the width of a very broad North Arcot district. The tribals there absolutely distrusted the uniform, both forest and police, because one would convict them or rather would charge them for petty forest offenses, and the other went to execute warrants. Both of us were a no-no to them. My subdivision then had nine police stations, sorry, 12 police stations headed by a sub-inspector of police. And these were grouped into three circles, each headed by a, an inspector and assisted by the now defunct post of deputy inspector. Now I come to something that is akin to what we're talking about. Community policing is the big buzzword, has been the buzzword whenever we talk of policing or better methods of policing. We have several officers in Tamil Nadu who have done their own tweaking of the system and won recognition nationally and in internationally for the excellent work done by them. Police public sports is an integral part of this community policing. And that's something I'm going to talk about. Years ago, it used to be left to each district to handle this particular police public sports in the way they wanted to. And in North Arcot district, our six subdivisional officers had to hold this meet once a year, which meant we had six meets in the 
um, whole year. And somehow this became a kind of a competition amongst us. So when my turn approached, and it was to be in January 1982, I decided I would hold my meet up in the Javadi Hills in Jamna Marudur. And the minute I made this announcement, my officers and men, I didn't have any women police then, looked at me in absolute horror and consternation, while the rest of the district found it highly amusing. Nobody had attempted such a thing, especially going and holding a sports meet in an area where the people were openly hostile and where we had hardly any infrastructure. The infrastructure there was a playing field which, were, which was used as a makeshift football ground, and we could manage a 200-meter track over there. However, I called all my officers together. And I should make a mention here that we in government service rarely get the chance to choose who works with us, especially at that level. As an ASP, I never had a choice of who came and worked with me. It is up to us to ensure that all the officers and men posted to us work together as a cohesive unit, as a team, to achieve the targets that we have set for ourselves and those that have been set for us by the district SP. So I called my officers and men and told them that we have a splendid opportunity now before us to gain the confidence of those tribal people, something that had not been done for a very, very long time. We sat together, assessed what was available, what we could do, drew up a plan, and then decided to meet all the headmen. They call Natans up at Jamna Marudur, and then come down to the plains and get the help of the plains people, because we need their help to make the event a success. We went up to Jamna Marudur, met the uh, headman, along with the physical education teacher from the forest department school, and Father Cadello, who did social service out there, ran a farm, and he was one person in whom all the tribals had tremendous faith. After our discussion, the tribals insisted that this sports meet had to be only for them, exclusively for them. Yes, you could have the mandatory tug of war with the police afterwards, but it should also include some of their games. We said, OK. That's fine by us. It's going to be a two-day event. And the time fixed was one week before the Pongal holidays. Now, Pongal was and is the single most important festival for them. And that week before Pongal is a time when they are busy doing all the work for the celebrations that come thereafter. But however, they agreed because we told them, don't worry about bringing any food we will see that all of you are fed when you come to Jamna Mardur. And so we went down to the plains people who just pitched in wholeheartedly. They gave us the grain, they gave us the groceries, they gave us the firewood, they gave us the money for prizes, they bought them, to be given to every single participant and to be given to the uh, winners. And then I found that the mood turning infectious with my own officers. They divided the work amongst them. One does the conduct of the sports, another sees to the kitchen and the cooking, and another looks after the general arrangements. And tremendous talent was thrown up. I never knew that so many of my constables and uh, sub-inspectors could cook, but they could. And there were others who could decorate the place beautifully. 
a local sub inspector and his men just went overboard. They put up shamianas for all the tribals to come and rest, plus other guests. F uh, festoons and buntings were put all over Jamna Mardur. It looked like a carnival had come to town. And as the date approached, the 9th of January, 1982, we police were out there. We watched in amazement as Participants, the young men and women, old men and women, children, all streamed in from those 36 villages. It looked as if the entire Javadi hills had gathered at Jamna Maradur. And the event started off. This, excuse my photo, uh, photographs, but this just shows you what it is. That's Father Cadello in front. These are the archery events. Maybe if they'd been given a chance, you never know what could have happened. This is part of the audience. This is what the place looked like over there. Our events went off very smooth. It was fascinating because we had over 100 participants for each one of the events. They were hotly contested, but everything went off much to everyone's satisfaction. The kitchen was a tremendous success, especially the second day when we were able to give the local delicacy of a pork curry to all. And at the end of the two days, the tribals went home happy and content, thanking the police for a tremendous holiday before the holiday. We had bridged the gap. Now, decades later, when I was head of the police force, I saw young district SPs, range DIGs and IGs, and the ADGs carry out several community outreach programs, not in the same way, but in different ways, where we got the help of the community to help us with our work and keep them safe. We have over 400 border villages and over 500 coastal villages. And this was the area we asked our SPs to concentrate on. And this is something which our SPs undertook to do. Went out to those villages, the deputies, the inspectors, sub-inspectors and head constables would address the people. And this time, we did it slightly different. We did it with the help of the other departments, the district collectors, the health, the revenue, the social welfare, the forest, and the education departments, the banks and transport companies all chipped in with, to give the villagers loans and other help out of ongoing schemes. And these are some of the meetings that were conducted at all the police coordinated all this activity. And at these meetings, one of the things that the officer, whoever spoke, be it a head constable or an ins or inspector or a deputy, was always about the only thing we in the government, revenue, forest, and police, we want is that you give us information if any stranger comes to your village. Because mind you, these are the border villages. And there was always a threat of intrusion by antisocial elements. These are some of the gatherings that we had. This is on the coastal side of things. The Coast Guard and the 
Uh, Navy also helped us out along with the coastal security group. And here you can see an inspector telling the fishermen what needs to be done, what they have to do to keep their area safe. And once again, we organized sports meet, join them for volleyball matches, etc. And what did this do for us? Well, in one border village, we got phone calls from them saying that there were certain people who had come in from the neighboring state. Immediately, police patrols rushed out there. We did patrolling of that hill area, and there were no intrusions thereafter. Two calls from two villages, coastal villages, led to the capture of four intruders and their mechanized boat. So when the community cooperates with the police, there is a lot we can do. And we can ensure that our people remain safe. It's not an invention. This was started long, long ago. But each one of us have been able to tweak it, tweak it and get going somewhere. And I'm sure all of you in your time will be able to do this, if not actually go in for an invention. Thank you.